Good evening, friends. And welcome as we come together as a community of faith here at St. Ambrose to celebrate Palm Sunday, the Passion of our Lord. Friends, all of us are encouraged to take time this week to really, really spend time with the Lord as much as we are able. So we are invited to join in the services this week, especially through the Holy Triduum, from Holy Thursday all the way to Holy Saturday and to Easter Sunday. So a Holy Week liturgy schedule is available in the bulletin. A daily Mass will be celebrated Monday through Wednesday on the regular schedule. And friends, for those of you that have purchased Palm Crosses, uh, if you did not pick them up last evening, they are available after Mass. But also, there are extra ones available too. If, if you did wish to purchase a Palm Cross, there are some Palm Crosses available this week. So they'll be available in the vestibule after Mass. Today's second collection will be for our Peter's Pence collection. But now let us join in prayer and song as we participate in our Sunday Eucharist. And let us sing together hymn number 137, All Glory, Lord, and Honor, 137. <laughs> Shield from buffets and spitting. 
The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
his betrayer had arranged to sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, coming off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its seat, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day, I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him in the distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, <coughs> Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, <coughs> But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, <laughs> Again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. A little later, bystanders came over and said to Peter, At that he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priest and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? What will yourself? Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money, but said, It is not all the law After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field even today is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price
price set by some of the Israelites. And they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, but he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Leaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, they spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they had come to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests and the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others, he did not save himself, so he is the king of Israel. Let him come down to the cross now, and we will leave him. Revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, <coughs> Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, and gave up his spirit.
And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from the top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him were keeping watch over Jesus, feared greatly that when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there, facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, of our 
evil desires, of our weaknesses, of our failures, of how we treat others, of how we fail, then we must follow Jesus' path this week as we seek to die to ourselves of all the evil, all the, all the things that are wrong in our life, so as to be filled up with God's grace. Another interesting point is that Jesus, since he is God, he is outside of time. And as he walks the path into Jerusalem with the palms of those adjuling him as Savior, Messiah, as he walks the path of his passion and cross, his death, his resurrection, he sees us there because he is God and he knows us intimately. So as we enter into Holy Week, let's pray with the Lord that we may accompany him on his journey, knowing that he sees us there among the crowd. We're there with palms 2,000 years ago. We're there as he offers the Last Supper, anticipating the death he would die on the cross. We're there as he hangs upon the cross out of love for you and me. We're there as he destroys sin and death definitively in the resurrection. This is the week that changed the world. This is the week that has eternal value that always will be relevant because it's true. Because God in Jesus radically freed us from sin and death. So today as we receive Christ, the fruit of his sacrifice brought through space and time at this Mass, let's ask for the grace to walk our own path of the cross. Let's also recognize that this week is so important in our spiritual lives, that we may walk his path with him, from him, so we can truly find peace in our life and <coughs> eternal life, God willing, in the life to come. And now we stand for our creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was the heart of the Virgin Mary and became man. But for our sake, he was crucified and punished Father. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. I confess all baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Our King has entered his city, our palms and cries of homage fade away. As the words of the gospel tell the story of his suffering and death, let us bring our prayers to the Father through the Son he gave up for us with love beyond all comprehension. In the church. May the church all around the world follow the Savior during Holy Week. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord be our prayer. For peoples of all races and nations who seek peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who suffer mental, physical, or spiritual anguish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For a spirit of penance, reflection, and gratitude during these chosen days, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That we may recognize how the Archbishop's annual appeal unites us as one family in Christ through the Eucharist. Called to offer our gifts for the salvation of the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the gentle repose of the faithful departed, especially Deborah Consiglio, whom we remember at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our personal intentions that we offer now in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. 
Lord and Father, with serene courage, your Son went forth to die for us. Grant us a share in his strength as we bring these prayers before you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Seven eleven. Take up your cross. Seven eleven.
sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of ministry of faith.
the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have turned under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. One forty five, O sacred head, one four five. Oh, wounded free. 
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. 410. Jesus, remember me. 410.